I'm currently on a landscape photography road trip around the far north of Scotland. Winter conditions are forecast, bringing heavy snowfall and sub-zero temperatures. I'll be staying in my 4x4 camper van which is put to the test as I attempt to make some of my best landscape images. In last week's video the rain turned to snow and the photography was a struggle but I was able to take advantage of a brief two minute window of light and capture this panoramic. After capturing that image I drove for two hours south to Ascent where I parked up at a location that offers so much potential but would the weather and the light be on my side? Today's video is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, good morning everybody. Oh, what a morning it is. It's absolutely beautiful. The winds have dropped. It's ice cold and we have a beautiful fresh layer of snow. So this is a beautiful area. I'm currently parked up at Loch Ascent and I particularly wanted to photograph this group of trees. That's why I parked up here, but the entire area, everything's beautiful. But I thought we'll start the day with something nice and straightforward just outside of the van. Man, am I disappointed. <sighs> the reason I was so disappointed was because of how messy the landscape was. I was not able to get any separation of the trees from the background and without either direct light or heavy snowfall I couldn't see an image. Thankfully colour began to appear in the sky which certainly lifted the scene but still, although I was seduced by the colour, I was not overly happy with the image. And if you're curious why I'm telling you all of this by voiceover, well sometimes when making videos in tough conditions. I run into a few technical problems. Snow giving painful field. So I've moved a, um, a little bit further up the lock, about a mile or so, and I was thinking about that last photograph, and uh, I've been looking at it on the back of the camera, and actually the more I look at it, the worse I think it is. I think I got carried away with the light and the colour, and it was such a short window of time, there was really no room for contemplation, composition, finesse, that kind of thing, and really that kind of, that chase in the light, that kind of photography I would... That's all I would go after many, many years ago when I first started landscape photography, but now things have changed and I much prefer the, I don't know, the quieter side of landscape photography. <sighs> With a bit of luck, that's exactly what we're gonna shoot now. In fact, I don't know, this is so good. <laughs> I mean, it's all, it's all a matter of preference, right? Um, this is just what I prefer. Obviously, you're all entitled to your own opinions and you all have your own styles and uh, your own, you know, what you, what you guys like most. So anyway, anyway, I'm, I'm off and on. I've gotta get shooting, man. So just here we have this beautiful island with these fantastically characterful trees plastered in snow sitting in calm water with heavy snowfall with no background perfect isolation perfect separation and 
ah, oh, it's just it's just magical. I'm quite glad I moved up the lock because those trees I was shooting before, I don't feel would have worked as well as this subject. Um, and it's simple, it's straightforward, but therein lies its beauty. Not much to say technically, I stopped down to about f7.1, focus on the tree. I'm giving the tree lots of room. It's really tempting to go in and fill the frame with the subject. Images like this, I feel, require space. And I think the more space you can give something, in some ways, the better. Obviously, you don't want to go too extreme, um, but yeah. I just can't believe the conditions we've got. I can't believe I'm the only one here and I can't believe there's no wind. We're in Northwest Scotland and there's no wind. <laughs> ah, yeah. So as you can see, there are more islands here and there's another island just further over that way. So I'm gonna go and explore them. I've got this shot. It's tempting to just sit on this because I love it so much. Um, but we'll go and we'll see if there's a, another, another shot to be had. But what I don't wanna do, and don't quote me on this because I might contradict myself in about two minutes time, but what I don't wanna do is just repeat the same shot. I wanna try something different, even if it's just different aspect ratio, different framing, different composition. It can't just be another shot of the island in the middle of the frame because it won't be better than this one. No way. This is this is the best island. All right, we'll see. We'll see what we can get. So we have some really fantastic conditions right now. The snow is still falling, but it's stopping and everything's lifted. We've got more light and more detail and texture in the clouds. And you can see that island there. That's what I'm shooting. I've gone for a 100 to 400 and I've got the, I've got the lens set to about 100 mil and I've gone vertical. So I'm making use of all of that wonderful sky that we have deep blues and whites with the, uh, the island at the bottom of the frame. It's a nice shot. I don't think it's as good as the one I just took, but I tell you what, when you're out in a location like this, uh, this is it, this is the thing dreams are made of. This is a fantastic morning. Actually, there's a, another group of photographers just out of frame there, just on a, a peninsula about half a mile away. And so it looks like they're having a great time too. Uh, it's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> really coming down now almost blizzard like conditions oh, man. what a time to be in Scotland eh So at that last location, uh, there was another group of photographers who all got chatting to them and it was a workshop. And the leader of that workshop was Dean Allen, fantastic photographer. And he was kind enough to tip me off on this location, which is perfect for how I'm feeling now, uh, which is a little bit tired, quite satisfied and very hungry. Uh, it will make sense. This is a beautiful parking area with an outstanding view of Sullivan. Sullivan is such a dramatic mountain, like a monolith that just rises from the uh, plateau and it's just so pronounced and makes it a great subject. And this is a fantastic, fantastic view. And with the way that the weather is and the light and the showers, it could be phenomenal. But I'm not gonna lie, the best thing of all is I can just keep an eye on it from my van 
whilst I enjoy some dinner. And then if we get light and conditions, it's gonna be a 100 to 400 lens shot and we could get something really special. Uh, so yeah, I'm really happy to chill out here now for a couple of hours and just see what happens. Oh, well, that didn't take long, I, <laughs> I didn't even have a chance to get my food ready. Oh, beautiful light just here on Sullivan. There is gorgeous light just hitting Sullivan and we've got that dramatic backdrop of those storm clouds. And it's just beautiful. I mean, again, it goes back to what I was saying before about everything being so simple. Um, it very much is just point and shoot. And I suppose the image is all about the elements, the light and the weather. Um, but man, I, I get really excited about shots like this. Long lens into the mountains is fantastic. Tell me what, oh, it's really cold. Oh, this is beautiful. So that mountain that I just photographed, Sullivan, well, I've come to a, another location, which is a lock, which is almost at the foot of Sullivan. So you get the mountain and you get the lock in the foreground. There are tree islands and it looks fantastic. I've never been before. I'm just walking there now. But as I'm walking there, I'm kind of already resigned to the fact that I'm not going to beat this morning's image of that tree island in the mist. If I do take an image this evening, this afternoon, it's going to have to be a nice one. It's going to have to be quite special because it's not like I need one for the video, which sometimes happens. I don't like it when it does happen, but it does happen sometimes. Yeah, so we'll just relax and enjoy ourselves, I think. <laughs> So I ended up coming back to the road. I was walking along the edge of the lock, uh, really difficult terrain. And although the area that I was stood at originally has so much potential, I'm sure it's been shot before, but in these conditions, it's no good. It needs light, probably better at a different time of year. Um, and to me, the whole scene just looked like a, a car crash. There's no separation in any of the tree islands. It was dark and bright and no light and ugh. So, when in doubt, simplify. So I've walked from one end of the lock to the other and for the entire walk, I was focused on that mountain, Sullivan, looking for ways to compose it, hoping that the light's gonna hit it. And I didn't find anything. And I realized the error of my ways, which is that I was getting tunnel vision. I was just fixated. I, I was under the assumption that the only image from this area must have Sullivan in it, and that's a huge mistake. However, at the beginning, when I first arrived at this lock, I noticed all of these reeds in the water. And I was looking at them thinking maybe there could be a foreground element with the mountain in the background. Um, but I never really tried to compose them just as a subject on their own. 
And it wasn't until I realized my mistake of being fixated with the mountain that I started to look at this area differently. So the exercise of looking at a location differently, especially one like this, is it's difficult, it really is, but it was made easier for me because as time went on it became more and more apparent that there wasn't going to be any light, especially not on the mountain. So I began to then look at things differently and ended up coming back to these reeds and noticed that this break that had occurred in the sky where there was a bit of colour and a bit of brightness, it wasn't necessarily light but it was brightness, it was reflecting in the water and it was reflecting exactly where these reeds were. And to me it looked like a watercolour painting, a, like, some, like an artist had smudged a colourful backdrop on the canvas and then delicately pencilled in these reeds so you get that contrast of soft colourful backdrop with these sharp reeds all crisscrossing. It just looked fantastic. So, a bit abstract and a bit experimental but I broke out the 100-400 lens looking down onto the water and I'm trying to find a combination of reeds that have some sort of pattern or some sort of order to them but it is chaotic and, and trying to merge that with an area of reflection which is pleasing, not too bright, not too dark, looking at the balance. We don't want dark clouds up here and bright light down here, it all has to be nicely balanced. Finally, I put myself a Case 6-stop ND filter on my lens because I wanted a long exposure. The water is ever so slightly rippling. The reeds aren't moving but the water's just rippling and I wanted that softened out so that it would feel like a, a an artist had smeared his canvas with multicolour paints, you know, I wanted that soft feel. Uh, so a five second exposure. I've got an f16 to try and extend that depth of field so all the reeds are sharp, focused in the centre of the reeds. And that's my experimental shot. As simple as that. I don't know if it's going to work. I know I said before that I was only going to take an image if it was going to be a, a belter because I was very happy with my one this morning. But with experimental images, I feel there's room. <laughs> well, there's room for experimentation, isn't there? Ah, so there we go. That's how it went down at this location. And it's now getting dark. So better head back to the van. Oh God, look, I'm just, I'm walking over this, just, it's hard going. Thank you to today's sponsor, which is Squarespace. If you don't know who Squarespace are, they're an all-in-one website building platform. So as a photographer, you might be in need of your own website, but you don't know how to build one, just like me, not a clue. Well, with Squarespace, they take away all of the, uh, well, all of the skill needed. You can just use their drag and drop system and some fantastic templates, and you build yourself a professional looking website with anything you want, online gallery, online store, all that kind of stuff, you know, sell prints and whatnot. They've even got 24 seven customer service, but go onto YouTube, watch a few tutorials and you'll be away in no time. I've done it myself with a couple of different websites in the past and it was very easy. So if you fancy that, go to squarespace.com forward slash heat and give it a free try. If you like free trial, use the off code heat and you'll get 10% off your first purchase. Today has been a great day, it really has. So I'm gonna drive off now further south to a new location, which will hopefully, if we get a good day, be next week's video. All right, cheers guys, I'm, I'm rambling on, so I will uh, hopefully see you all next week. Bye, bye, bye.